continue in our worship series, Worship 101. Last week, Joe invited us to consider how we respond to the Word of God proclaimed, and this week we turn to the ways the Spirit seals the Word upon our hearts. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the 139th Psalm. Listen now for a word from God. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, still your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, and night wrap itself around me, the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, O God, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book was written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them had yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end. Still I am with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil, do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way within me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, hem us in behind and before. Seal your grace upon our hearts this day. Amen. A sacrament is when something holy happens. A sacrament is when something holy happens. This is how theologian Frederick Buechner describes a sacrament, a moment when something holy happens. A moment when the sacred breaks into the ordinary, a moment when we are confronted with the extraordinary beauty and wonder of the divine, a moment, as Beekner continues, when you catch a glimpse of the almost unbearable preciousness and mystery of life. A sacrament is when something holy happens. I'm sure you know these kinds of moments, moments when you are standing in the presence of the divine, moments when you are no doubt having a sacramental moment. A moment when we can't help but wonder and say something holy is happening here. As 30 of our high school youth laced up their walking shoes every day last week to walk the Camino de Santiago through Spain, something holy was happening. Sacramental moments happened as they gathered each morning to stretch and 
have morning devotion. Sacramental moments happened as they shared holy conversation along the trail. Sacramental moments happened as their feet tread the same trails that thousands of pilgrims walk each year. And yes, sacramental moments happened as they walked through the cold, rainy weather, which we had just about every day. The psalmist of the 139th Psalm is having a sacramental moment, a moment that glimpses the almost unbearable preciousness and mystery of life. The psalmist gives praise to God for God's inescapable presence and comfort. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. For the psalmist, awareness of God's presence is a source of great comfort. It is almost unbearably precious and full of deep mystery. It is indeed a sacramental moment. But I confess this week the wonder and the awe that the psalmist feels at the inescapable presence and comfort of God. The sacramental sense that something holy is happening seems at best distant to me this week, and at worst absent altogether. The aftermath of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade has left our country in a whole spectrum of emotions. And so many of us are heartbroken, angry, grieving. Add to that our deep disconnectedness as a culture, the ongoing crisis of gun violence in our nation, the effects of global climate change on the environment, the list could go on and on. It can be terribly overwhelming to be in this moment right now. To be honest, there are days when my heart cries out with the psalmist, not how wonderful are your works, O God, but my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? So this week, if you feel like it is a challenging moment to be alive, you are not alone. If you are wrestling with how to be a faithful person in this moment, you are not alone. If you wonder, where is God when the world seems tumbling out of control? Wonder, where is God when each new day brings reason to weep or grieve or be upset or angry or afraid? If you wonder where is God when our capacity to see one another as fearfully and wonderfully made is so wounded that we rejoice when others mourn. If you wonder, you are not alone. God is here, the psalmist affirms. God is here. God is here. Not in spite of our anger or heartbreak or grief, not to dismiss our emotions, not to ignore the pain of the world. God is here because there is nowhere we can go where God's Spirit is not there. God is here because there is nowhere where we can flee from the presence of God. God is here because when God's people suffer, God's heart is the first to break. God is here because God does not shy away from the longings of our hearts. The psalmist reminds us God intricately wove us together in the depths of the earth. We have been intricately woven by an infinitely mysterious and precious God. So God created our bodies to feel anger and heartbreak and grief and longing. And when we do, God bears witness to it. And God joins us. I believe 
that there something holy is happening. Because the good news is that sacramental moments don't just show up in the picturesque moments of our lives. Lives where we feel like we have it all together. The moments where we have planned and curated perfectly and everything goes to plan. No sacramental moments show up in the sacred mess of our lives. They show up in squirming and screaming babies at the edge of the baptismal font. They show up in the taste and smell of broken bread shared by people broken down by the world. They show up in wine poured out for us to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully and beautifully and wondrously made. Sacramental moments happen when we dare to show up in the fullness of our grief, our despair, our anger, our rage, our fear, and trust that God is the one who knows it all, who knows us through it all. For God has searched us and known us, knows when we sit down and when we rise out, knows the words before they even reach our tongue. God knows. And God calls us to the table. God calls us to the table not to pre pretend as though all is well, not to ignore the burdens that weigh heavy on our hearts, not to escape the challenges that stand before us. No, God calls us to the table says, come, have a foretaste of the kingdom of God. Come and be filled with the grace of God that nourishes and sustains us on the journey. Come, come and glimpse the almost unbearable preciousness and mystery of this life. Come and risk transformation. I believe that the almost unbearable preciousness and mystery of life is that we do not come to the table alone. The Holy Spirit gathers us around the table with the church in every time and place for the joyful feast of the people of God. And so we gather with those wrestling with how to be faithful in every moment in history. We gather with those who are wondering, where is God in all of this? We gather with those proclaiming, how wonderful are your works, O God. We gather with those who are crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? And yes, the truth of the gospel is that we gather with those we consider our enemies those we hate with perfect hatred because they are not enemies to Christ. They are God's beloved for whom Christ offers himself as well. Each time we take communion here at Myers Park, we pray this prayer. For these, your gifts of bread and wine, we thank you, O God. As by the miracle of creation, they are changed into us by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we be changed into you to join your ministry of justice, mercy, and love. May we be changed into you. This prayer is a prayer of transformation. It is a prayer that all of the things that we bring to the table be transformed. Come, bring your anger, says Christ. Come, bring your heartache. Come, bring your longing. Come, bring your grief. Come, bring your joy and your celebration, because God will use those too. It's a prayer of transformation, that God will transform our fear and our despair and our perfect hatred that God will use all of our intricate, complex, fearfully and wonderfully made selves to be bread for the world, that God will weave us together into the body of Christ. 
stitched by the hands that created us. Here at God's table, the grace of our infinitely precious and mysterious God is made real for us in bread and cup. The grace of God is revealed as we dare to show up exactly as we are. And indeed, the, God, the grace of God is sealed on our hearts as we dare to risk being transformed for the kingdom of God. Come. Come to the table, says Christ. Because this is a sacramental moment indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen.